The first video I ever made on this channel was the $10 GPU. The premise? A GPU you could just buy off eBay or whatever, use it to plug and play, and be off to the races. Just rather slowly move towards them. But honestly, I'm not satisfied with that video anymore. Clearly, it was the first video I ever made, too, and I could do better now, and so could you on being given better options for better budget cards. Me offering them to you, I mean. <clears throat> so, I found it. The next $10 GPU. The, that's it. The, this is an intro. Alright, so if you have been paying attention to my community posts, you might have seen this guy recently. And hopefully you guessed correctly that it was a R7430. I am no stranger to OAM GPUs, and this card right here is another example of one of those cards that a system integrator, HP in this case, need to put in their systems for a cheap yet effective display out back in the day. But this one is a bit strange. Notably this time around, the $10 GPU has double the RAM and is now GDDR5 memory, which is awesome, honestly. But, well, you can see our specs on this card is great for $10, you know, it being readily available and whatever is great too, but information on this card is off, to say the very least. But that isn't as integral currently as seeing it work, so let's leave those nitty-gritty details for later. As for now, let's put it in our system and boot up a couple of games I tried originally on the first $10 GPU to see how much better it can do now. Games like Nuclear Throne, FTL, Don't Starve, or Stardew Valley are going to run no problem on a card like this. But some of the games that I really wanted to see that struggled before with the first $10 GPU were games like Hades, for example, which run no problem now at 1080p. Side note, no complex frame data like the first video. Like I said in the original, if you're the kind of person who wants or uses a $10 GPU, all that matters is that it runs well enough. But yeah, anyways, look at it. It runs great, as opposed to before when I had to lower the resolution. Looking pretty good. There may be high hopes for this R7430. So let's check out another game that the HD 6450, the first $10 GPU, had trouble running. Maybe Risk of Rain 2? Ooh, this is not bad at all. This is like, a hundred times better than before. Sure, it is 720p and it isn't running with a lot of settings maxed out or whatever, but this is 100% playable and it looks a lot better too. I bet settings might need to be lowered a little for late game enemies that will make the game chug, but man, I knew this card would be a lot better than the original, but this is real nice to see. Oh, power outage. I just wonder if it will run games that wouldn't run before, like maybe Foxhole. Well, I shouldn't be surprised, but <laughs> this is pretty sweet. It definitely isn't winning any awards, but we are moving along nicely so far. And sure, we are messing with our settings here and there to get this, you know, all running decently. But for 10 whole smackaroos, I mean, this is hard to beat without having to wait and get lucky that someone you know is upgrading their system and throwing out their old GPU. But okay, so right off the bat, let's make this clear. There is no way you are running any new AAA games with this card. However, considering we only had DDR3 memory before, one gig to be exact, we were a far cry even from running most Xbox 360 era games, or even PS4 games for that matter. But without having to test every single one of them, many titles from that era, including many different esports, will run on this little guy to some degree. That being said, you will have to compromise or change or lower settings again, and again, and again. But for you or for your friend or sibling to get an experience for the cost of virtually nothing, allowing you or them to get up now, maybe not running, but moving nonetheless is what matters most here when you look at the bigger picture. To just game. Very, very nice. So I mean, I guess we could start pushing this card to its limits a bit more, right? Let's do it. So then, what about some recently released indie games? I know that any 2D indie game will run fine, but what about the 3D ones? From some of the games I've checked out, a lot of them run pretty well, and I barely have to think about lowering the resolution or changing settings in most cases, but you can't always get away with it, it seems. Some newer indie games, or even slightly older ones, smaller game company games, you name it, 
might have you lowered to 720p, but is still playable at the end of the day. Which is better than not being able to even run them to begin with, but eh, it is what it is, I suppose. With that being said though, I doubt you will be hard pressed in most situations trying to decide whether or not that game you were eyeing for a while now will run with this cheap GPU. And while keeping that all noted, sadly I can't find an easy way to overclock this card to make the most out of the heatsink since programs like MSI Afterburner seem to not know what to make of this little guy. So this is where we sort of hit the ceiling unfortunately with what we can do with this GPU. At least, not entirely. I think the Chevy could do a bit more and even be overclocked a smidge. The drivers of this card that were automatically installed onto this PC are from April 2022. Well, maybe there is a slightly newer one. Also, the release date of this card is from 2013? Wait, that is definitely not right. There's something fishy going on here. Upon hitting the lookup button to be brought to the R7430's tech power up page, we are not brought to the R7430's page, but instead the R5430? So this is a Dell OEM part now. Gotta love the totally not confusing information that I have found. While I'd love to investigate the rabbit hole that is this GPU and its midlife crisis, I will pass this time and just go do what one of the warning messages told me to do before and use AMD Adrenaline to update this card. Which I figured wouldn't work, of course. All oh, discontinued hardware is super fun sometimes. This means it is time to go with everyone's favorite custom driver program, RID, or yes, its old name, NIMS. And funnily enough, it also got confused and broke at one point. Despite this, we got some drivers that are not exactly for this GPU that will work, but if I had to take a guess, it won't do much in the end. But this is fine. This is a $10 GPU we're talking about here. We honestly shouldn't even be going through this trouble of doing all this stuff in the first place. This is a card with a very specific role, basic gaming and use at a low, low cost. This GPU will absolutely struggle in some cases, but it is meant to be thrown into a cheap or old system, which for us could be a small form factor, with the intent of allowing someone to actually be able to run a game that was previously impossible before. It will run a small but fair amount of Xbox One PS4 era games without too much difficulty, which if you wait for those older titles to go on sale, you won't be spending much overall, and for all intents and purposes, we'll get the job done now, so maybe a year or two later, you can get something way, way better. And by then, hopefully AAA games aren't just the same microtransaction experiences that all cost $69.99 at launch. But I have been blabbering on way long enough, so let's wrap this all up. I am glad there is a new king on the throne. It might be a throne that only three of us really worship, but a king on the throne nonetheless. I just wonder what the future has to hold for this hyper-budget price point, and what games I will be looking at when that time arises, if any of those games are worth playing. But until then, I am sure this GPU will do someone good until they can finally upgrade or build a nice budget PC from saving up every penny that they could collect. But I really want to hear from you guys on this one. Do you have a super cheap GPU that you bought for a criminally low price? Or even a CPU or whatever? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you liked this video also. I worked very hard on it, and if you want to support me, you can become a member for only 99 cents a month here on YouTube. I would greatly appreciate it if you did. But other than that, you can subscribe if you aren't already, like the video if you haven't, join the Discord, yada yada yada, and oh! As always, thanks for watching.